If you could somehow feel radio waves, or if you could somehow see them, right now this is probably what you'd be feeling, or seeing, coming from pretty much every direction in the night skies. Unusual micro flashes, only visible in radio waves, basically coming from everywhere with the frequency that you see right here, up to approximately 10,000 per day. And though at first it wasn't clear if these are actually real, or if it's something coming from planet Earth, such as for example radio emissions from various smartphones, after 15 years of various investigations, radio astronomers are now 100% certain that fast radio bursts are definitely real. But exactly what produces them, or how they form, that's the mystery nobody can answer. And anyway, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to be discussing some of the recent discoveries in regards to fast radio bursts, including new observations, new mysteries, and new potential revelations, but also possibly at least one study that might have found some clues that may one day help us understand what's going on here. But in case you've never heard of these phenomena before, or in case you forgot exactly what this is, these are essentially extremely fast radio emissions, lasting just milliseconds, but very often containing a huge amount of energy, coming from various directions in the entire universe. And up until 2020, most of them were coming from really far away, usually hundreds of millions of light years away from us, up to several billion light years. But in 2020, the first ever FRB was discovered coming from a magnetar right here in the Milky Way. This FRB, known as 2020-04-28, because it was found on April 28th, basically suggested that maybe these are actually caused by various magnetars. Extremely powerful neutron stars that produce the most powerful magnetic fields in the entire universe, that due to their sheer power are able to suddenly emit these radio bursts once in a while. And at first it did make sense, but the actual physical explanation was still not particularly clear. Particularly because it was difficult to explain why some FRBs seem to be actually repeating, yet others only happen once. As a matter of fact, there is an iconic repeating FRB that's been actually emitting FRBs extremely regularly, with the emissions from this direction even detectable today. And so instead of narrowing down explanations, in the last 15 years since the original discovery, we now basically have over 50 different explanations, all trying to figure out exactly what's happening here and what's causing these mysterious radio bursts that are basically right now one of the biggest mysteries in astronomy. The event that happens thousands of times per day and is visible from every direction. You can actually find this particular page in the description below and it does go through everything, including of course more unusual explanations such as aliens. But when it comes to that magnetar from the Milky Way, there actually have been some new revelations based on a recent study. In this case, by using the largest radio telescope known as FAST, a team behind the study you can find in the description discovered almost 800 different pulses that were actually much much weaker than a typical FRB. In this case, they basically monitored this magnetar, observing various radio frequencies coming from it after the initial emission. And interestingly here, the emissions were very similar to what we usually see from pulsars. These were radio pulses, but much much weaker than a typical FRB. In this case suggesting that sometimes some magnetars can actually become temporary radio pulsars for some reasons we still don't understand. Although here the emissions were still quite different even in their properties, suggesting that the original FRB and the radio pulses detected afterwards very likely came from different locations inside the magnetar's magnetosphere, but more importantly suggesting that repeating FRBs are possibly unlikely to be powered by magnetars, because in this case the FRB emissions were most likely created in a much more chaotic way, possibly moving in every direction and unlikely to be then repeated in the way that we see it from other sources. And so here the radio pulses seem to come from a fixed region around the magnetar, but these FRBs or fast radio bursts seem to happen randomly and are possibly associated with very explosive events inside the evolving magnetosphere. Or at least that's what one of the studies suggested based on the nearest fast radio burst to us. This also of course implies that to some extent maybe these FRBs are caused by entirely different events depending on where you look. This could basically be some kind of a universal phenomenon that happens around a lot of magnetized objects. But for the most part, most explanations still usually involve 
some kind of a neutron star, or maybe even two neutron stars. Maybe it's a neutron star collision event. At least one recent explanation actually featured this, even explaining how these radio emissions could be produced by colliding neutron stars. But in this case, we would also expect some kind of a gravitational wave emission visible by facilities like LIGO. And some studies actually try to assess this by comparing gravitational waves detected in the last few years with a variety of FRBs detected to date. And while according to the study you can find in the description, there doesn't seem to be any link whatsoever. And so theoretically it is possible, it's just extremely unlikely that there are so many neutron star collisions out there, and so far none of the detections of neutron star collisions, or even black hole collisions, resulted in any fast radio bursts. But interestingly, there's been some major breakthroughs in detecting new types of fast radio bursts in just the last few months, with one of the recent studies identifying what the scientists now refer to as microsecond length fast radio bursts, discovered by analyzing older data from the Green Bank Telescope. And though previously all of the FRBs discovered were usually few milliseconds in length, this time the researchers discovered 19 extremely short FRBs anywhere from 5 to 15 microseconds in length, basically at least a thousand times shorter, with the actual emissions and the appearance of the radio waves almost identical to their much longer siblings, which in this case sort of makes it even more difficult to explain the actual source, but also naturally suggests that there could be even more FRBs coming from every direction than we ever thought possible. Moreover, one of the most recent studies from just a few days ago was able to actually retrieve what seems to be a nanosecond based FRB that's essentially a million times faster than anything we've ever seen before. You can find the study about this in the description below, but in this case it used the data from one of the most well known repeated FRB that turned out to be producing not just regular pulses, but also these extremely fast micro pulses that nobody knew existed. And these ultra fast radio bursts, that seem to only last approximately 10 millionth of a second, are obviously even more difficult to explain. These once again resemble their longer cousins in the power and the overall shape, but just last much 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 shorter, making this whole mystery even, I guess, more mysterious. And intriguingly, one of the ways scientists were trying to figure out what's actually causing these is by looking at various galaxies where FRBs came from. Because maybe by pinpointing the source of the FRBs, we can then figure out what's actually causing them. And though previous studies suggested that maybe it's actually usually common in various starburst galaxies, with a lot of massive stars then forming neutron stars and magnetars, the most recent study finds something entirely different. The FRBs that they looked at did not come from starburst galaxies, and actually came from extremely quiescent galaxies that barely had any activity whatsoever. These types of galaxies are also extremely unlikely to even have magnetars. Massive stars in these galaxies have not existed for a very long time. Once again highlighting that maybe FRBs is just some kind of a universal phenomenon that sometimes involves magnetars, but sometimes involves something entirely different. Although whatever it is, it has to be an extremely powerful event because of the recent detection. The newly discovered FRB 2022-0610A apparently came to us from approximately 9 billion light years away from us, redshift of 1. And here it is coming from colliding galaxies, where we usually do expect a lot more star activity and a lot more starburst. But instead of providing solutions here, this FRB sort of created a bit of a problem. Because previously scientists believed that we can use FRBs to potentially measure a lot of things about the universe, including measuring a lot of types of matter that they pass through, and even discovering various types of missing matter, potentially solving a lot of cosmological mysteries. The way it's done is by basically looking at various frequencies and how these frequencies are affected by passing through different types of matter, and essentially how long they take to reach planet Earth. But here the authors behind the paper discovered that the intergalactic medium seems to affect FRBs a lot more than we initially believed. And very likely because of various types of magnetized plasma present inside various galaxies. And so here this plasma actually affects the FRB so much that it almost appears as if it came from much much farther away, potentially making this technique maybe not that good, because there is no way we can know how much plasma FRB passed through. 
In at least one known case, one of the FRBs appeared to have traveled double the actual distance that it traveled, mostly because the scientists later found the galaxy and it was actually much closer. And so the presence of this unusual turbulent magnetized plasma, very likely located in most galaxies, makes these measurements a lot more difficult. But despite all of these somewhat negative discoveries so far, there actually was at least one positive discovery coming out of Japan. A discovery that once again compares FRBs to something that might happen on magnetars. But in this case, this study used something that we actually have so much data for, especially in countries like Japan. They actually used statistical data from earthquakes. And so here, by statistically comparing fast radio bursts with various earthquakes, they discovered a surprising similarity between both phenomena. And more surprisingly, they discovered that FRBs seem to be different from starquakes, or essentially similar events usually detectable on stars. And here they found four statistical similarities. First, there was a relatively high chance for an aftershock in both earthquakes and FRBs. Second, the number of aftershocks decreased over time. Third, the overall rate of aftershocks seems to be more or less constant for both phenomena. Even if there is another earthquake or another FRB, the number of aftershocks does not actually change. With this unusual similarity, suggesting that if this is true, the events might be caused by a very similar phenomenon to what happens to Earth's crust. And more importantly, implying that neutron stars, or at least magnetars, actually have solid crust on the surface, with a sudden release of energy potentially forming these FRBs. And by itself, this would be a pretty big discovery. It presents an intriguing explanation to what actually happens around these stars, with FRBs basically being a result of the powerful interaction between super super strong gravity and super strong magnetic field, with once in a while one winning over, resulting in huge amounts of electromagnetic energy in the form of radio waves suddenly being released. Here both the magnetic field and the gravity are essentially in a kind of a permanent state of balance, unless something happens on the surface and something throws the magnetar off balance, suddenly causing the emissions. But much more importantly, this then means that we can actually directly study the surfaces of neutron stars, and possibly even their interiors, in the same way that we use starquakes to study various stars. This is known as the astroseismology, and we'll discuss this in one of the videos in the description. Which of course means we can now gain insights into what's happening inside these very strange objects, in the process of potentially discovering entirely new physics we knew nothing about. And so at the moment this is one of the more exciting discoveries in regards to vast radio bursts in the last few months. But in the last year there have been other discoveries you can learn more about in the description below, and we'll actually discuss even more once new studies come out. So if you'd like to learn more, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Thank you for watching, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.